OK, well, this is a, an example of stainless tubing that we could use to yeah. make a rigid unit that doesn't flex when the vacuum is on it from the engine. Right. And what's that, two mil thick? Three, I'd really suggest. Really. It's uh, 100 or four inches in diameter, 100 mil. Um, the unit only needs to be about 435. The other one was 870, uh, the first unit. So you're looking at about that in length for an actual unit mm -hmm. to produce. What we'll, sh what we'll see with these plates um, is virtually the same sort of arrangement, the amount of gas coming off. How many plates you got in there now? There's seven in that. Are they about that size? There we are, aren't they? Yep. Let's go through the hole. Just about. Identical. So if you, were, you could run the stainless tube with mesh in it, right, but it pulls too much off the alternator. A long one. Yeah. A long one, yeah. So if you cut it down to about a foot, right? Um, what do you reckon, two foot? One foot? No, How long four, four, four. Thirty, 435, the one that you chopped in half. It was 870 before you chopped it. What's going on? Huh? Is that going on? Yeah, yeah, I've got it on now. It's on record. Okay. So four, what was it, four? 435. 435 was the second unit I made. By 100. Yeah, and yeah. the mesh is 8 mil square on 12 mil centres, and it was approximately 1.6 in diameter. The, uh, the the actual diameter worked out to be about 68 um, millimetres across. Right. And that, the smaller size one, gave the, um, uh, gave the car everything it wanted. Right. Just as that and drop down because of the length, then it dropped down into into current. Right. But uh, if you wanted to run um, oh, smaller ones and less current, yeah, then you go to putting uh, tubes, floating tubes, in. center mesh. Mm -hmm. It gets it out heaps better than the solid right. center as a negative. Mm -hmm. Solid stainless outside as mm -hmm. a positive. Two is the best. Two tubes, neutral tubes. Mm -hmm. Um, outside the, the mesh, and what's the gap on that? Yeah, it's approximately six mil, five to six mil. Why? Yeah. I'd like seven, don't like six. Yeah, mm. sevens as well. Yeah. <laughs> number six, number six is not my number. <laughs> seven. Unless you got three on my day. <laughs> I don't want three. Yeah, I don't need my two. Yeah, about seven gap gives you the gas off, right. really well gap. Um, and um, you have two, two of those tubes, neutral tubes, they don't touch anything either end. Mm -hmm. The gas will come off both of those. Each one will drop your current in half and you'll come down from, say, 75 amps down to uh, 5 amps and get off twice to three times the amount of gas. You want to that. fill that tube and just put that unit in so and show them... It's still running here. That it, that it will produce. And it, Oh, there's a bit that we put in the bottom of that before, too. You want to flick Does that off? Does it matter much yeah. on the mesh? Hey? Does it matter much? Does that matter? This is mesh what Peter had got. Um, square meshing. Mm -hmm. He said would, um, he was hoping this would work. This does not work nowhere near as well because the, um, the wire, they're sealed wire, mm -hmm. and they're just interlocked. All right. Right? Now, the current seems to be able to go through and past where if right. you have welded mesh or if you have um yeah solid welded mesh the current can't circulate and go past you'll come down to the square and break out in the four ways and put your gas out right okay. if you falls in don't matter if you have solid tubing first of all you get a very very small amount off the the face like these wires are face, mm -hmm. the gas starts coming off the bottom really well because it is being cut right. and it's rough. Mm -hmm. No face, it's no shiny face. Um, little bit off the sides here. If you grind those sides, 
or you cut those sides in any way or rough it up. Mm -hmm. Gas rips out there and you can see the difference between it. Right. If you have the mesh um, like this, heavier actually is better. Where's that other one, Peter? Uh, Down here. Yep. This is the actual size. It's not very large mesh. This is um, cut off the mesh what we had in the units. Mm -hmm. Got that? It's an eight, eight mil square and the, the, the meterage or the, the next size to the next hole is 12. So it's, it's known as eight mil square with 12 mil centers. Testing this will show that off these bits here, you will get probably four times the amount of gas is what you can get off this stainless, which is sealed. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the difference just by those. She interrupts the flow of current, it seems to. Right. Anyway. Positive. Negative in the middle. Throw that over. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Put in now, just going in. Actually, you should be above it. You want to see the gas, all right. Okay. I don't want to... Sorry, mate. You're all right. I just went to pull the way. As soon as we touch the negative in, I mean the positive in, we will get gas off our negative. Hold on. Yeah. You hold it still, please, not just run down the side. You're right. Okay. Stay when? Yeah, for it. Okay. Okay. Now we're in solid outside to a solid negative centre. Now you see positive does not put off very much. Negative puts off everything. It splits from negative out towards positive. It does not meet with positive though. Oh, yeah. See that? So the outside should be a... Um, the outside should be a solid. Mm-hmm. Negative is your Now, negative. what can we do about what we have for the um, can we go around this? I'll pop them in here. What? That unit? No, I would have showed this here as a centre now. Oh, right, okay. As a negative. That'd be the way to go, wouldn't it? Positives are hydrogen, uh, positives are oxygen molecule, negatives are hydrogen. <laughs> Other way around. No? No, you're virtually right. It changes right. all the time. <laughs> no, you're virtually right, but you get get it off both. You get both off both. Positive is not an oxygen. Positive is an oxygen and a hydrogen. Negative is an oxygen and a hydrogen. Okay? Now we're going to touch B, aren't we? No, no. no. Can you see that? Mm. More see that? The negative. Yes. Now, if we come out of the water to our solid, see that? See how it's not producing as much on the mm -hmm. solid? Yeah. See the difference? Even though we're really close, look. Right? But then you go to the mesh. See the mesh? And then deeper you go. See it? That'll just mm -hmm. rip out of the mesh as a negative. Didn't go bang, Pete. No, it didn't. Aren't we lucky? No, <laughs> it is. Yeah. I was trying to make it, actually. Oh. Oops. So it's getting... Can you see that better? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, a lot better. Don't come too close this way, Pete. No. You don't want it to go bang. Oh, don't worry, man. What, you're deaf, Joe? <laughs> Will be soon. And now lift it slowly out, Pete, as she comes past the word about there. See the difference? Yeah, it slows down there. Yeah. Right. Now, let's um, try... Let's try your wire mesh. Wave and just mesh, yeah, stainless in. steel screen. Now this one puts off more larger oxygen bubbles. See the larger oxygen bubbles? 
Just put it down to the bottom, Pete, I don't care. Just in the middle, same place as the other. Can you see the larger oxygen bubbles now? How can you tell the oxygen bubbles? Because <laughs> you can breathe them. <laughs> Oh, but I mean, oxygen's a large um, See, uh, hydrogen is the smallest, right? It comes off the smallest, and the oxygen seems to be the largest. Oxygen ones do not, um, well, you can see through them, they're not milky, they're not uh, small, tiny, gassy, uh -huh. or anything else. There is a difference. Right, you see the difference between this gas and the other one? We've got twice as much in. You see that? Mm hmm Whatever, we've got twice as much in up to here, and it doesn't put off nowhere near as much as that small ring. That's that one. Oh, it's that one. Understand? Mm hmm Good. Now, we've got something else to put in, too. Well, what about a solid? Okay, let's try a solid. You got, Don't make it too long so we can see, in, see it, all right? That's too long. This is stainless. See the larger bubbles? Move it to the side. Move it to that side. Okay, this way. See, so closer you get, she rips out towards the positive. Also, positive comes in to meet. It's coming off the outside more. No. That one is roughed up a bit. That one is producing, right? Try not to get your uh, yeah, this in because that's going to produce two people. Copper. Yeah. Okay. See so your finer, finer bubbles. Mm. Right. Hardly any. Um, and the larger bubbles yeah. on the inside. Yeah. No. Well, the larger bubbles are not doing anything. The inside doesn't do anything. Mm. You look in the inside. Yeah. But it's only just a few. Like the only thing, yeah, the only thing the inside is doing is coming up from the right off right. the bottom, and then when you lower it uh, deep down, then your um, your jumper leads started producing. Mm. See, and then she curled over and went down in the top as you went deeper. Nothing comes out of the middle; it's neutral water. Okay. Right. Well, now, what else have we got? Yeah, you got some of those, haven't you? Huh? We don't use brass or copper or anything. It goes green and pollutes and will completely oxidizes. completely oxidise up. Completely. That one has only been in for a couple of minutes yesterday afternoon and it has gone green now. You keep playing here, Peter. I've got something we'll, else to get you to show you it oxidises we'll, right. We'll just show, even with a threaded section, right, the size of the bubbles, all right, as you move closer to the mesh, how much more rapidly the gas is produced from a threaded section. Okay. See the gas coming away there? That's using a fairly large O-ring to make sure that it can't touch. Alright. Now, this is one which has run for about Two hours. Put it down about this height. That is um, brass, isn't it? Yeah. Brass nut and tube. Beautiful crystals. <laughs> Leave it longer running and she'll completely block up. And that there does not produce any gas. This was only just coming off where the gas was coming off the top of the water and out through the pipe. And even the pipe. I don't know you can see down there, even the pipe down the centre completely pollutes green. No good. That wouldn't produce if it was underwater. Wouldn't produce if it was out of water. The section here, if we try and see the, uh, see the unit on the, uh, around the threaded section, you'll see it start to produce. And then you'll notice that it's a lot finer bubble or uh, okay. running off the, off the shinier face. Might have to get it to blow first, Jan. You can see that, can't you? You can see how it's rapidly coming away from... The thread? The threaded section, whereas it's not coming away as quickly from... The surface. 
huh. the shiny surface. Right. This is different too because when you've used plates, it doesn't matter how thick the, the tube is, it doesn't matter how polished the sides are or anything else. She goes through, the current goes through, mate turns both sides into positive and negative and produces on both sides of those plates, no matter how thick they are. Mm -hmm. We'll show you that other dot in with um, Peter's um, tube in a minute. It does not have to be in water. Yeah. There you are. This is just using uh, another piece of stainless um, with a um, yep, surface on it. Thank you, go back, Peter. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Well, you that go yeah, that'll pop. I threw a match in my bucket. You can't, you can't make it go through. I tend to get the bubbles. Well, if you get enough in a closed space, you would. I had a, um, I got mm -hmm. some balloons yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's coming out the bottom of the gas, uh, where the rough edge is. Very little off surface. The current is going straight down the uh, metal to the bottom and coming out the rough edge. If you rough the plate right up the edges, you would see it coming out the roughest. She breaks away. This mesh is interwoven finer uh, stainless, um, completely sealed around the, um, the threads of the, of the mesh, actually. And that doesn't produce a real, real lot. It comes off the bottom, as you see, if he pulls her out and then lowers her in. You'll see it coming from the bottom because that's a rough edge where it's been cut. So she's coming out there, but not a real lot off the actual face because it's a polished. What I had first was these, this length here in these size plates, and I had them every second one of these circles, and that made up the full length of that. And then I brought them in to every first which was giving you a certain gap a smaller gap which meant the unit then was that big and it was placed into this we got it mm -hmm. first one as you can see was that wide the next one was two three four five six seven there that wide which is the same width as the cap mm -hmm. A bit smaller than the cap. So you could almost make one that would just sit in a tube yep. straight down. That, those seven plates in this, are we in line? Yeah. Those seven plates in this, in line, positive both ends, negative centre, produce gas off both sides of every plate tremendously. Except the outside plate. Except the, that way and that way, yes. Um, all the way through, negative centre, and your current flowed both ways, off both sides of your neutral plates. The only plates connected are negative one centre one, positive both end ones as seven plates. So you had two neutral and two neutral each side. So you had positive, neutral, neutral, negative. Neutral, neutral, positive. And that then run a Leyland P76 4.4. 4400 V8 car. Right, can we see that happening without the, just straight in the water, how the, all the plates are producing without being connected? So running a car continuously just in hydrogen, no petrol? No petrol. How long? I only went to Lismore and back. What it didn't do, is this the running? Yes. What it didn't do is because we had, where's our polar thing? Because we had a polythene case, this here, you can't bow by hand. But when you put vacuum, these units here, inside that, this container, the lid on, your positive and negative connected, through this tube here was your spout for taking the gas off. 
your plates. We're down in the middle. Mm -hmm. This end screwed on and an end cap the same. This one here had a, a gas. She had water to the level. You getting that? Yep. Water to the level. This in here was air space, gas space. Spout out here with your hose on a two-year intake manifold. How did manifold. you connect the wires in? Through the cap ends? Yes, yeah, so I put a bolt out each end. Right. Through. Mm -hmm. right. Put a bolt through each end so I could hook my wires on. In the middle, from positive to positive, I just looped the wire over the top just to join the two end plates because I only had it connected to one end. Right. So then both ends. And the middle one had a bolt right through the centre, insulated just to the centre plate. Right. So we had a negative and a positive mm -hmm. out here and a wire over. Um, the gas come off here. Now, on idle... Stainless wire, was it? No. It's copper. Doesn't matter. It wasn't in the water. It just looped over. Over the top? Yeah. Oh, you mean over yeah. this way? She looped. While the plates are in here, I just clipped it, put a little uh, alligator clip on there, mm -hmm. took it over the top and alligator clip on oh, right. here. You see? Mm -hmm. So... Basically, it was not in the water. No. Not okay. in the water. Didn't right. matter anyway. All right. Now, with this lid on, screwed down, and your tube out here on idle of the vehicle, the Leyland, this unit did not flex in or out. When you gave the vehicle a rev, this lid expanded up probably an inch to an inch and a half expansion outwards which was very dangerous mm. the motor instead of doing what it should have done this is all going on mm -hmm. instead of doing what it should have done um, polluted very badly pollution fumes smoke everything else out the oil filler cap the dipstick and the pollution valve in the tapper cover the motor run but was not as powerful as um, as petrol mm -hmm. at that stage with a polythene unit. The opposite happens when you use solid stainless. When you use a solid stainless um, uh, cylinder, your cylinder does not expand or contract what then happens to your motor is instead of pressurizing fume out from your positions around your pollution positions it then has a vacuum you with the vehicle going if you pull the dipstick out the motor will stall if you loosen off the filler cap oil filler cap the motor will stall that's with this solid unit with a solid unit yes mm -hmm. or with a yeah. solid unit right Polythene has pressure out. Solid units has a vacuum pull inwards. You can put your finger over a little t the little tiny hole in the tapper cover where your, just a small hose comes off and the motor runs smooth. Take your finger off, she'll start shaking like anything and stall out. She has a suction on your finger. Mm -hmm. With a polythene one, has a pressure. With a stainless one, you can increase your performance three times over. Mm -hmm. Power, vacuum in your manifold when you back off, um, speed, and you have brake horsepower. By just backing off on your accelerator, your motor will feel like your, your, your car will feel like you're using the brakes, where it's not. Right. It sort of works the opposite way with a solid unit, it works the opposite way to what exhaust brakes do on a truck. Exhaust brakes shut off the, the flow of gas outwards, so you stall your motor, and it uses the brakes to slow your vehicle down in gear. This seems to work on the intake. Uh, a solid unit works on the intake and has a similar thing. When you back off on the accelerator, you feel like your nose diving. Mm -hmm. With a polythene one, or a one which can expand, it can be thin stainless, like we showed you on that other one. It can be thin stainless, which under vacuum will expand. Instead of contracting in like it should, it expands out. And when it expands out, you, your motor uses the gas what the vacuum pulls off. 
but the unit's gas, which I, I'm only surmising this, the unit's gas, what it can put off under atmospheric pressure, doesn't get used by the motor. It's the thing what expands, as far as I can figure out. And then, when you back off on the accelerator and then go for the brakes, you should have manifold vacuum. But what happens is that pressure in the cylinders by the bowing outwards then transfers into the manifold and you seem to race ahead and you go for the brakes, there is none. Because mm -hmm. you have no manifold vacuum. It's just transferred that pressure into the manifold. Where a solid unit does the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. You've got instant power on, you've got instant back off, mm -hmm. and you also have the, um, the manifold which locks up, holding you back with the brakes on a solid unit. And you also have extra brake horsepower by your actual foot brake mm -hmm. because you, you have instantly have that drawback. You have that, yeah. So, so solid, solid containers are the way to go. go. Mm -hmm. With a polythene unit or a flexible unit, if you're trying to get your pollution down, like mm -hmm. your exhaust pollution and your motor pollution, that is not the way to go with a flexible unit because mm -hmm. it has pressure. Solid unit is the way to go because then she does not have any uh, exhaust emission. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any manifold, motor, tapper cover, dipstick, oil filler cap, any pressure in your motor at all. In fact, it has a vacuum to your motor. No oil right. usage. That's the way to go. Mm. I'm just showing that one working, Jane. But if we can have it. Okay, hold on. Well, I could have. I'm the temperature. Your motor should run somewhere in about 90 This degrees, is on a solid unit. Yeah. Right, on the rover. On a solid unit, run around about 90 on the temperature gauge. When you hooked up the solid unit to it, she went to instant cold. The motor just run dead cold. And it wanted to perform better on dead cold, and you couldn't get it hot. And you take it off and put it back on the petrol, she would come straight back up to your, to your um, medium or normal running. <coughs> even she would even override your thermostat, everything. So that means that you're, there is a reaction in your motor. Yep, yeah, yes, there we can, right. we can pull that in, can we? What? See which plates produce at the same time. Yeah. If you wanted to, I think I've got a grinder in there, you could cut some of these off. Those ones? Yeah. To all to be equal. Yeah. Can you get that down in there? Yeah, it's a bit dark. All right, try again, Pete. Just, uh... Don't, no, you're not connected well, Peter. No, I don't. Getting it now? Yep. So, Pete, if you had the um, same length tubes and you put them in the water, yeah. it would fill that bucket completely. She'd just run out over the top and equally right. show you each side of each plate. Well, why don't we just put it in that, then? Because that... Got that? Okay, this tube's got a, a solid, solid base, base on it. Solid yeah. base. That water's pretty slippery. Yeah, that one. You're probably pulling the bucket apart now. Okay? We can put that into the bucket. We can put the mesh on the outside. And we can put a negative down the centre. Right. And both sides of this will produce in the water out here and in the water in there. All right. There's no connection. No connection through the water. That'd be a good one to show with. No, no connection between to the stainless to stainless. No. Mm. Out of the centre one, which is then connected to nothing, neutral. We then have the outside one, which is this size, mm -hmm. blocked off at the bottom, full of water. Bucket, got water in it, not connected to it. The neutral plate in the centre will produce gas off both sides, not being connected to positive or negative. Can we put mesh in the bucket and try that? Like we it? will when we do this next time. Will okay. be right? We're rolling. Okay. It's producing a lot of gas. Did um? Did we see what happened? Oil gas is just coming for a refill. Good. <laughs> Did we catch that? Yep, it's all gone. Right. 
what I wanted to do was clear that and then <coughs> if you could get down and see that, that negative neutral plate. I need to lift it up, Joe. That negative neutral plate. Right. I'm going to have to lift up the whole thing. Take it out. No. What I'll do is I'd like I'll just touch on and off so you can see where she produces, all right? Mm -hmm. Throw it. It's a lot of gas, isn't it? You see? Mm -hmm. Very low current. About with one neutral plate, about a bit less than half the amperage use as a negative centre and positive outside. When you put one neutral plate not touching anything, your current um, amperage use is about half. Mm -hmm. If you make it, put another plate in, two plates, it goes down half of that again and produces twice the gas. You right? Yep, rolling. Okay. My first attempts with the plates was I hooked up negative this end, positive that end, and hoped it would flow through. We got a very, very minimum amount of gas coming off the inside face of negative only. None of the other plates, not even positive, was producing. Well, actually, you could show that anyway, couldn't you? Then I took from negative here and I went across to the end one, so that was positive negative. That then becomes, when I found out, that then becomes one unit, two plates. That produced gas in the inside of there, tremendously. None of these produced. Still similar fine mesh uh, bubbling on this one because we still have negative to it. I looped to the, to the next. We got fine bubbling in between these off that neutral plate off the inside of positive, off the inside of negative, and still the fine bit on this end. I then went to centre, negative to centre. I got production off two neutral plates, inside positive, inside negative, nothing down this way. So I continued on down my way and it diminished right out to nearly nothing. I looped me positive across to this side. I got gas in there which made one unit. I then looped it to this to the next center, uh, the second plate up this end. I got gas in here, none up that end. I looped to the center. I got gas on inside negative, two neutral plates on both sides, and inside positive towards negative. None up this end at all. I was then told that the plates were too small, which I found out my way, it's not. What I did then was take me negative from the end. I put it in center looped as i said before on tape looped positive each end the gas uh, the the current flow went both ways and the gas ripped off every single one of those plates on every side she just roared out okay. you couldn't stop it. and that's that's how i worked it to make the um the vehicle work all right, all right. So, let's see that uh, it's under 15 as you can oh, see that's oh that's right oh yeah 10 to 12. is it oh, i thought they were in fives Okay. Turn less. Yeah. They're still all coming away from all those plates. Yeah, see she's evening up. These plates might be starting to clean themselves or something. I'd look at the yeah, shit in the top of the bucket, I'd suggest that's what's happening. Yeah. you go the other way. The main thing is here that the gas is producing on all of the plates and they're not connected. See them? Yeah. One plate uses a bit. See that's going up, see that? This end's got more, Peter. Fifteen amps, is it? Yeah. You look by the see the end? Right. Right. So that end wire or something, there's something wrong with it. Yeah, well that doesn't surprise me. I've got a hold of it. <laughs> okay. 
Can you see that? Just a little bit. 15 amps, yeah. Can you see that it's coming off? It's going across <laughs> all of those, isn't it? <laughs> Big deep breath, Joe. Might clear me sinus. Hey, Phoebe. But okay. there's no claim that it will. And see this way in centre, two plates either way, she's going either way. See it going that way? It's mm -hmm. going that way, it's going that way, it's going that way. All these are going. Coming away from all surfaces. Yeah. Better go and have a, have a teaspoon for the hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> That'll clear your sinus, isn't it? Hydrogen peroxide? Okay, folks. Will it? So the thing can see. Thing? Okay, thing. Okay. Felix. No, the camera. Not at all. Right? Ha nearly nothing, right? Next one? Yep. Next one? Yeah, it's starting to produce my end. Negative. Right. Next one. See my end? And those plates are starting to react. See, uh, two that way? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Small gas away. That wire must be losing it, eh? See yeah, that? It's producing. See, those wires are losing it, aren't they? <laughs> okay. Everywhere on this, before when I had them connected, in the thing, every one of those ripped out like just two together. Okay. Okay, 24 volts here now, not 12. We're going to try that. Go to answer. Yeah. You're not connected, Peter? Yes, I am. Okay. Every one of those plates are performing. Are we right? Mm-hmm. Everyone? All right. Okay. Just go alligator clip. Alligator clip. Ooh, yeah. And negative center. Are you hook under that? Yep. I think. What are you? Hang on. No, you're. I'm still positive. Right, you're positive. I'm negative. That one there, Joe. There you go. Okay. Negative center. Positive both ends. Twice the gas. More Don't than lift twice yours off. I'll take it off here. Why not? <laughs> Let's try the amps. Can you do it? <laughs> Look at that. Pretty We're pulling. Hard. What's that? 15. It's 15. Yeah, it's 15 amps. 17. This is about how it ripped out a bit more than this with those other plates. Better than that. She'll contaminate the whole bucket. Oh. Now, I'll go this way, one. <coughs> See it ripping out then? All right. Now, a bit more. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not enough to set it off, Pete. Isn't it? Yet. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> That's a better one. It's close to the back one. That wire is better. Did you get that? <laughs> Is that touching the bottom, Joe? Yours is touching, Peter. That one's touching on this side here somewhere, or on the bottom. Rips out, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not touching there. See, if that ring at the bottom, you force it over here, if that ring at the bottom isn't right at the bottom, she could have pushed it over and touched it. Try it. Try it again. That's all right. No, shorten. I've got a spark coming up in here. What's it coming off on? It'd be touching here to there. Yeah, it's still touching the bottom, isn't it? Yeah. At this stage, this unit's charged. It will apparently um, pick up the, the data very, very quickly. Uh, because we've charged it, it's now HOH. Okay. Um, hydrogen, oxygen and hydrogen easily separate. I'll just touch it so that you can see it coming away from the actual unit. See how that's producing there? Yeah. 
And now I'll just touch the, uh, the ignition. That's still connected. I'll now disconnect. Watch the unit. Produces exactly what you require at the time. The worst part about this is that you're now getting more water out the exhaust, which you could, in fact, recirculate and make the unit operate fully. Yeah, but it's no good. No? Well, <laughs> blow yourself up with that thing. What are you actually wired up to then? Nothing. Plastic lid. Right? It's cool moment. Moment. It's That's wired up to itself because it's charged. Like a battery. Yeah, it becomes a battery. Mm -hmm. okay. so, yeah. Three minutes or three miles yeah. to become well, a battery. Well, we have this run for about five minutes before. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no, it's it's now now cool. See, that's producing its own gas. Oh, right. gas. Yeah. Right. And when you hook it up to the original battery, then your water fills full of... See how that vapour immediately comes off? That's what was running my units before. You will get heaps more vapour when you have a stainless steel outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Understand? But just for the practical purpose of being able to see it... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's good. That's so that's now with it, now connected. Oh, no, that's not good. See, actually, that, that verifies my idea on these polythene expendable units. Because you can see that it's only using still the gas what it is pulling off under its own, see? Mm. And it's not using any of this other. Yeah, you see that? That means water. that when you have a flexible unit, the gas you produce with current expands the unit. If you didn't you have it attached to your battery. Once that. it's charged, yeah. it's fully charged. That's still, still, still start. Still, still, that's just still run without yeah. it. Yeah, so we got, if anyone's got a, uh, a pressure gauge. It means that you, d you haven't got your vacuum lift on the water. Right. Is that right? Yeah, right, yeah. When you've got a solid container, you can lift that amount of water clean out through the top, top yeah. because you take off your vacuum. There you've got pressure because the lid is right. pressurising. Yeah, right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Because you can just take all that pressure off oh, your it's the, 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 amount of, the amount of flexes. Straight yeah. in under the unit where your venturi lead and the top of your motor goes directly under your throttle, under your carving. <laughs> we're, we're putting the gas directly in where the exhaust gas uh, or the bypass blow gas that comes from the top of the motor goes directly under your, your throttle. It's um, under the carburetor so that you've got maximum vacuum direct in. Okay. The, with, um, with the vacuum gas and everything else, you, you have to have gas to motor usage air and gas, um, intake of air and gas, mm -hmm. to the um, exact fine critical point, it's a hair whisker line, the same as the distributor, when you cut off your petrol and go to your gas, on petrol you can turn your distributor like that and it hardly does anything to your motor. Mm -hmm. When you put the gas on, you move it, oh, mm -hmm. not even a, the width of a piece of foam and paper, and your motor mm -hmm. will shake like anything, or shake like anything either way. And you have to hit that exact point or else you won't get your efficiency, you won't get your motor to run away. changing the distributor. Timing. Your distributor has to come, when you cut off your petrol, if you run pe petrol by itself, you are, you set at your normal, um, whatever it is, eight degrees mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, if you, um, if you hook up the petrol and gas, you would then, instead of eight, you would come up to say about 15. 12 to 15. Mm -hmm. When you cut out petrol altogether, you would come from 15 up to somewhere in about 25 to 30, maybe more. Depends on the the vehicle. Whatever vehicle is all different by that. But you have to come straight around to that. You can start it at your 30 degrees advance um, with your gas off your ignition, and she will start 
like that. First go. If you go back to one drop of petrol with the gas, she will go rrr, rrr, like the timing is too far advanced like normal. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you go back to your petrol, she's too far advanced. If you're on the gas, she'll pearl over like she's just starting on normal petrol. All right. So it's that critical of alignment. And when you mix with your vacuum and everything, you have to get your right gas to your right air mm. with the ga with um, hydrogen oxygen vacuum. Right, right, sure. And if you don't get that, it's that critical that she won't go either. Mm. See that? Mm. Right. Mm. How many? Two neutral plates. Yep. Right. Two neutral. I'm touching. Something's touching. Took it back up. Producing more with two neutral plates. Yeah, yep. see that? Okay, then we'd, the next one would take the plates out. Okay. Solid at the bottom. <laughs> Solid bottom. Okay. Holding the unit. Okay. See, there's hardly anything off those wire mesh outside. Mm. If you've got a solid outside, she'll rip off the solid outside. It's only really coming from negative out. Okay? okay let's You're getting a fine one off the positive, but you need a solid outside. Okay? What's that? Just on its own. To do what? Yeah, to skate it that way. Okay. That's solid inside, but Peter. I should stop blowing things up. Get an idea? If we had a solid ring around the outside, the outside yeah, would cool. produce inwards. That's yeah. only producing outwards, see? It would produce both ways. You haven't heard this go bang yet, have you? Yeah, he's waiting for it. He's <laughs> playing with this connection in the right spot to make it. No, dry. I'm not. There's not enough bubbles there. Okay. As if you're doing it this way, is can we put some water into here yep. to show also... Oh, we can't. We haven't got a thing. Actually, we have. Yes, we have. Where's this? Neutral water centre. The right. only gas that can come up underneath is from the bottom. That is in the same amount. Same stuff. So if you're looking for a reservoir or Just a that in. separator, you can use the centre, even though it's in the same water, you can use the centre as a burn back. Right. I've done it. In the welder one I made, I... I done it. I hooked the two rods into there so that yeah, the gas can't. Yeah, we've got enough gas there to make it go bang. <laughs> Did we get that? What was that? Okay. Okay. What we did here was took um, some of the hydrogen oxygen gas under pressure off into a very small uh, welding tip, and we applied it to this side of the brick. And as we come down with the tip. There was no splutter back. The tip had a very fine little imploding blue flame. Very, very short. Imploding it was, not exploding. And we applied that down onto the brick. And what happened was the brick started to swirl and gurgle up. And she blew a clean hole. And this is the back side. The gas come from that side and come out here. There's no fluxing, nothing on there. And then we pull the brick apart, and as you can see, she blew a clean hole straight through the brick. Turned this brick into black ceramic crystal. That is harder and harder than the brick. There's no way not. That's, I don't know how many times harder than the brick. And that heat come off the gas, which we are running in our motors, and what we are producing here on the buckets, the same gas blue straight through and out that. As the implosion seems to be that while it was imploding and we pushed it down through the brick, she seems to pull up the melted ceramic brick upwards and twirl her out the top, not out the bottom. On the top of the brick, we run the flame across. How fast would have you run that, John? The flame was probably taken across very slowly. I didn't do this one, my son done it. He played with all these. He just run it across slowly like that. And what she did was turn the top of the brick glazed. That was aimed straight to the brick. That's why she spitted it out, see? 
on here, we had a high tensile head stud welded as well. You want to go any further? I'll keep going. That's right. Mm -hmm. This shows very thin um, gal pl uh, tin. My son done this. Um, it also shows brazing and solder. And this here is very, very thick stainless, spring stainless. That was um, straight, no flux, no nothing, no rods, straight to the, the gal. Um, also, we blew just run the, the flame across and she blew straight through the gal. Um, we put the two, cut the two gal plates, put them together and you could solder them together. It's a complete neutral uh, flame. And so that was running off? The same gas will blew straight through the... But how were you producing it? Just off the All battery? you do is come close, yeah, off a battery. All you do is come closer or further away by only a degree on that and you can either cut by lifting it a fraction welding by lifting it just a fraction more or bringing it a bit closer and blow straight through a brick. Overall, between cutting, welding and blowing through a brick would be only the distance of, say, an inch. What size um, welding tip? Smallest. We just, well, we had a big welding set and we just got the smallest big tip off it. That's all there was. We didn't get a kickback. And you were yeah. running it off a bottle or yeah. one of those... Say this thing at Peters. No, we, we run it off. Um, we run it off that T piece unit of mine. Right. What was running the rover? Right. Right. Well, here we are <laughs> talking about talking, but also researching water fuel process in uh, a place in Australia, which we will remain nameless just for now. And this is a car, and this is the engine, of course. Well, what we've got here today is what we saw the other day, a water fuel cell, as you can see, zooming in. I don't know if you get a good picture on that. There's a um, mesh in there, core, three, three um, meshes in there, a center electrode, negative or positive, doesn't matter, and then a floating unit that's not connected, it's insulated from everything else, and then an outer mesh, filled with water, a teaspoon of caustic, in about four litres, so this is about a quarter teaspoon to two litres. Um, here we'll see the gauge, there's a vacuum gauge, the maximum of the vacuum runs in that direction as it increases. The tube here runs flexibly all the way in and under the um, carby where the, where the normal um, breather off the manifold comes in. I'll just get a shot of that around here, coming in underneath there. If you can see that without backlight. Anyway, so uh, what we're going to do is kick the engine over, then we'll do a reading off the vacuum, then we're going to read off this um, voltmeter. It comes on about 13 volts and then, then decays. This unit will work under, as long as the vacuum is connected and produce gas without being electrically connected. Now we're going to electrically connect it and you see a lot more gas. 13 volts approximately. So now we'll connect the uh, voltmeter up. Can you come and hold the voltmeter on please? Peter? Fingers off Peter? The fingers off Peter. Peter fingers. <clears throat> Focus on the voltmeter. 8, 7, 5, 7, 4, 13.7. Right. Now, now disconnecting. It's mm -hmm. dropping down to, what's that, 1.3. That was quick. Yeah. Now you got 1.2 volts. There's still bubbles being formed in the chamber there, in the cell. 1.14 volts, still gas coming out. There's no connection on the battery there.
Another 1.01 volts. Okay. Stabilizing about 170 milliamps. About 10 minutes later, after we charged it, and it dropped down to below one volt now, the 700 should drop down to 170. We'll check it again in a minute or two. Okay, it's the volt meter is reading 700 millivolts now. list of things that people have got to do because nobody's listening and they're not they're just going off and trying to do it on a unit that produces gas without doing all the other things to get itself running and they think just because they can get in efficiencies like 60 percent or whatever that they can then automatically go to self-running with the same thing but it's not a matter of that it's actually a matter of altering the engine a little bit as well to tune it to the fuel yeah we're all in this joe Oh, sorry, this is Joe. Joe Blow from... Dory Go. <laughs> We're all in the experimental stage, right? Yeah. I'm not going into it, but I have had a Rover 3500 V8 with twin carbies, a Zenith, same as SU carbies, running. And that was with a solid unit. I didn't understand why the vehicle seemed to start and run perfectly when nobody else seems to be able to hit it was a Leyland P76 V8. Now the whole motor on it is open. It has an open dipstick, it has an open oil cap, it has an open motor. It has a, a, a petrol pump on the bottom which has two little breather holes in it and they are open, which air goes to the sun. Now I have never had it running on a solid stainless hydrogen unit because two things happen. I've had it running on a polythene unit with plates in it, which you have on tape, and that unit expanded. When you powered on, it expanded. There was a pressure there. When I first took that up, hooked up to the motor, the motor polluted ten times worse than on petrol. Ten times worse. And it had a pressure. It was pressurising the sump out, but it was dangerous. Hooking up to a polythene unit or an expandable unit or a contracting one of any sort, whether it's stainless and it can expand under under acceleration or anything, it's dangerous. It'll blow up. So the the Rover V8, uh, the the Lola V8, <coughs> sorry, it run. I went from Casino to Lismore and back again, polluting the matter itself all the way. But you don't want to blow yourself up because that unit was expanding that acceleration. The unit just expanded out. And if that gas can get out anywhere, you're gone. The car, everything around is gone. With a solid unit, it does the opposite. The solid unit has a vacuum to the sun, gives you tremendous power, gives you tremendous backing off, and gives you smooth running, economy, and no danger. No pollution. No pollution in the motor or out the exhaust at all. None. We've had readings on that. We've put it over an analyzer, and it don't read. You put a polythene unit on, and you get the opposite effect. You get a pressure in your sump, which then blows fumes and smoke and soot and shit out. But it also pressurizes the unit. It also makes everything wrong. Wrong way to go. So they're the two things I've had. Units. I've made a few units. I've made polythene ones. I've made um, stainless steel ones. I've made stainless steel ones what can expand under vacuum and they're very 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 dangerous polythene ones don't seem to be as dangerous but I, no one in the world is going to get me to run it one again so the idea would be to have a stainless steel uh cylinder and put some neutral plates in. you know what i mean neutral, neutral tubes plates. yeah we've neutral explained neutral that on the um on the, the, the video before yeah it's, it's already explained so that's what you know what to look at when i say that that then will give you what you need. Because if you don't do that, then you have uh, big units like what you have here now and so on, you're going to use a lot of amperage, um, you're going to flatten batteries, it's not going to do what you want, you're going to end up in trouble that way. 
I've already had those big ones running, and 10 minutes you're floating the battery in, drain an alternator. Every bit of alternator. That's if you don't have the neutral plates in it, or if you That's do? That's if you don't. But if you do... If you come smaller units like you've already... But what about in the big units? Can you put... Can we put floaters in there and bring it down to five or seven amps or something? You, in big units, you can... I don't care how big you're making. You can put... As long as you've got floaters in there, you'll bring the amperage yeah. down? You bring the amperage down. So we can seems probably get... The, the current seems to go from a positive and a negative, and instead of staying at that, whatever it's going to use or pull or whatever, it then seems to break them down and bring them back the opposite way, but produces twice the gas. Mm. You've already seen that on video, it shows. Mm. You put a neutral one in that you use a lot of amperage. I mean, you put positive and negative, just single plates. You use a lot of amperage, and you don't seem to get off the gas you want. So the idea will be if you are trying to run a vehicle and use a, a positive and a negative in it, just singly, you're going to have to go bigger units. But to do that, you're going the wrong way because then you need heaps of flame and amperage, you need bigger batteries, you need mm. more current to run it. So that isn't the way to go. Right. Understood. Very, very deep charge unit which will run all day. You can turn it off and leave it for hours. I mean hours. And you can come back, no power on, and you turn the ignition on, hit the key, instantly that the vacuum goes onto that unit, it is a charge unit, it runs, it starts. You yeah. leave it overnight, and somewhere between, somewhere in about three o'clock in the morning, the unit seems to go dead by itself. You can run it up to 12 o'clock at night, yeah. and the, um, the vehicle will still start. Go out at 12 o'clock. Don't run it all afternoon. Go out at 12 o'clock at night. Hit the key. Causes a vacuum on the straight onto the unit. No power connected to it. It'll start. I don't know what. It'll start. But you leave it till the morning. There must be a, I don't know, something in the air or the cooling or the, the actual magnetism in the earth or something like that. Wait. You know we have done some experiments by hooking up a one The strange thing about it is, if you have a large battery, and you have to use it all the time, it uses the current, produces gas, and you don't need all the gas. It produces, as you see on, on your, your film and everything, you also the gas or the bottles you don't need. That gas is not needed. You have gas mm. there which will run it when you disconnect all you the You don't current. need extra gas, basically. No. So if you have a big battery, it will use it, and if you leave a big battery connected to the unit and turn your motor off with a current going in, it will only take 10 minutes or more, and your battery out here will be dead. But you hook up a little 1.5 volt battery, and you can leave it on there for as long as you like. And it does not affect the... the it doesn't flatten it. It doesn't use anything. It holds the potential over the unit. Potential means it holds the... You understand? It, it, what? Voltage pressure. Yeah, but it's not producing any gas. That that uh, 1.5 volt battery does not produce any gas while it is connected to the unit. Not enough current. But it holds potential on it. We've been driving in the Rover, driving along holding at, say, 60 miles an hour on the accelerator and the motor and uh, the car and everything on the unit. No, ga uh, no power connected to the unit. And we have connected this 1.5 volt battery across positive to negative, and the car just took off like you dropped it back a gear without doing nothing. And it does not drain that 1.5 volt battery. You can leave that battery on there day after day after day and not run the vehicle in. It won't flatten it. Put your big battery on and flatten it in a few minutes. This stuff works very strangely. Well, it, you're saying that the 1.5 volt was working really well and that as soon as you put the 12 volt on, it was going, dropping the 12 volt out. Uh, differences in current. I mean, on a 1.5 volt, you've got no current. On a 12 volt, you've got plenty of current. Yeah, but while you've got vacuum so pulling on your motor, while the car is going and you hook up that 1.5 volt battery, you get an increase. Your car takes off like you drop back again. So you took your electric... That is not voltage. taking... The voltage seems to be there rather than the current then. Because there's no current in a 1.5 volt anyway. Either. Well, it can't be voltage either. No, I don't know what it is. It is something. These are things what what's the vacuum? What's, you fellas may have to find what, out what's what it is. What's the strength of vacuum? You, you, 
need to use on it. You know, you say you're pulling vacuum. Yeah, but okay, well, in your manifold, mm. okay, in your manifold, uh, the um, uh, the rover was pulling about 22 to 24 vacuum, uh, you know, inches, inches uh, um, vacuum. And you can drop right down. I've had the, the uh, rover down to about two pound manifold vacuum and the car was idling smooth as glass. You put on petrol and you drop down under, say, 12. Your motor don't go anymore. Mm. She just thought, she stopped. She stopped. Mm. But I've had them running on two pound manifold vacuum. Not with acceleration open. With the motor just stalled right down to that. Mm. And the car is still going smooth as glass. Now that's physically, by uh, mechanics it is impossible. But it happens. Mm. But around... Your, your unit, from the hose from the manifold to the unit, it would not be pulling your 20, uh, 22, 23 pound, right, inches, because your carburetor pulls some through and loses it through the top of the carby. Um, when you open up your throttle, a lot comes in with the air, so you don't have that pull in through the hose where we're putting it on. Um, you would be getting you'd have to be getting five pound onwards. I don't know, I haven't had a vacuum unit onto the onto a unit as it is pulling the gas. Okay, so if, to find you had, out. if you had a motor that was leaking, that wasn't sealed, and you put more vacuum on, then would it work that way? Yeah. If you create more vacuum in another way, rather than sealing your motor, create that same vacuum? No. Because what seemed to happen with the polythene unit was it was producing more than it could use. Mm. You're talking about increasing the gas. Okay, when, when the polythene unit was running on, on this Leyland here, um, while you're idling, the polythene unit was level. When you increased acceleration, normally, logically, the unit by a, a heavier vacuum pulling on it should have sucked the unit in. This didn't occur. The unit expanded. Tremendous. It's expanded tremendous. That's on take two. Right. Um, and by doing that, what was happening was the unit was producing more gas than what was needed. And it seemed to be pulling off. Under atmospheric pressure, a unit puts out a certain amount of pressure, which you can regulate. And, you know, you can check and everything. Now, if you have um, vacuum, you pull off a certain amount of gas. Mm. But between vacuum and, ma and um, atmospheric pressure, there's a difference. The, in the unit, it seems that the motor wants to pull off under vacuum, but it doesn't seem to use any of that other gas what comes off under uh, atmospheric pressure. So when you cause a vacuum on there, you think you, you can't... Uh, even out by pulling um, atmospheric plus vacuum. Why the polythene units expand is because the what it'll what it'll uh, get off under pressure, atmospheric pressure, doesn't use any of it for some reason, and that expands a unit, and that's why it's so dangerous because there is so much pressure you can get off those units, and it's more than just what you can regulate off atmospheric pressure. Because when you put a vacuum on, you remove the 57 pound um, pressure, atmospheric pressure. Mm -hmm. And there is a great big assistance of that gas for coming off after that, without vacuum. So we've got our gauges set here now at naught, but we have, our gauges here for our pressure here now is set at naught. But we have the 57 pound vacuum pressure on. Pressure's on us now. Isn't it 47 pounds the screen? Close. Whatever it is, I'm not quite sure. I don't know any mathematics or any of these things. Whatever the pressure is on us now is removed under vacuum. The vacuum can pull off what it needs. The unit can, can produce gas of its own accord without any current input. If you put in uh, current input, and you put, uh, which causes a heap of gas, and you put vacuum, which you've seen on the on the um, on your tape, it produces its own gas under vacuum when the unit is charged. It's only using what it vacuums. Mm. There is a mile of gas you can see on tape there and in the unit being produced under your battery 
under charge or under your normal pressure. When that pressure is removed, there is a super release and that expands the unit out tremendously. You become very, as it's on tape before, you become very inefficient. When you back off from the accelerator, that expansion of the polythene unit then transfers into your motor. If you want to slow down, what happens is you can't. Because you back off in the accelerator, that stops the vacuum on the unit. That stops that pressure sucking. Your car doesn't slow down like it normally does on petrol. That pressure expansion transfers into the manifold and your car just keeps going and you go for the brakes. There's no manifold vacuum brakes. They're gone. With a solid unit, you don't get any extra expansion of gas at all. And when you back off an accelerator, your car does a nosedive. She just slows down like you rip the brakes on without touching the brakes. When you power on, it is there, you've got what you want. You can have it with the current or without the current. It makes no difference. It's very strange. Solid unit is a way to go. But if you've got any flexible hose or any flexible unit, whether it is thin stainless and, and can, say any flexible hose, you do have about how much? Well, on the unit, on the um, the tube, from the from the manifold, I I was running a tube. I don't care what type of tube you use. It can be any metal. It can be copper. It can be um, stainless. It can be brass. I don't care. It doesn't matter because there's no pollution from your motor backwards because your motor is negative, but your unit is positive. And if you join the uh, metal hose from your manifold or carby to the it's unit. It's got to be that way. You can't have a negative uh, exterior to the unit. So you can have Yeah, but see, what, what, what other people have with my ideas, me explain them to them, what they've done on their own is run metal, thinking that it's the wrong way to go, hook metal tubes up from the unit, which were positive, all the way down nearly to the motor, and then put in a, a tube. It didn't work because apparently you're the gas and everything else what is coming off it's splitting from negative towards positive they say it is a positively charged what do you call it filter whatever whatever is coming off is supposedly so I'm, so other people have said without mentioning me it is positively charged now it if it is that way and it's trying to then get to a negative it's been split from a negative out it does not go to a positive, because off your positive walls, gas comes off in. Off your negative, gas goes out. It is not a magnetic attraction towards, from negative towards positive. You can see on film there, it comes off and goes off, goes away. Mm. It, if you bring them in too close, they fight each other. They cause a barrier where they just, both of them just can't get off. Mm. So it's not this one pulling that one to there, or this one pulling that one to there. They are separated, they want to get off. If they are a positively charged uh, particle, they are looking for a negative to flow down. If you run a positive tube all the way from your unit down towards your motor and put in a small bit, right up there is neutral. There's no water, there's no current, there's nothing on that. The current stays in the water. Between your negative and your positive, it stays in the water because negative is not connected to the positive. So that thing there is a positive. And apparently what happens is the gas seems to attract straight to the wall, it's gone. But if you have a negative from your motor back to very close to the unit, that is a negative. And if it is a positive, I don't know any of these things. It's all experimental. If that is, this is the way I've had it working. If it's a negative tube, the positively charged things seem to see it up that line. And they jump towards it, they don't blend into it. They just get a grease lightning slip straight through down into the motor without any restriction. On that copper tube I was showing you, which was polluted badly, one side of the copper tube was connected to the unit where the water was and everything else, and that turned out polluted dark green crystallised gah. That f far further up the tube was clear and clean because it was not down near where the positive charge stuff is. So 
your copper. If you say it pollutes, it only pollutes on the positive side. But it has to be a solid piece, right? Solid. If it can expand or contract, when you put the vacuum onto the motor, it will suck in because it's not producing any gas. But if your unit, like a polythene one or anything else I've showed you there, if, if you have a, um, a unit which the plates in it aren't strong enough to put off the gas you need, you should have that little bottle put on this now to sort of show. Mm -hmm. The bottle, because it only had very thin wires, would run the car and would stay expanded, or stay to its size while you're idling. When you accelerated, the very soft wall plastic cordial bottle went in because those plates could not put off the gas to compensate. Mm -hmm. But when your plates are big enough and strong enough to put off all the gas you want, then it doesn't suck in it expands and becomes very dangerous. Mm -hmm. The sucking in would be great. You know, it wouldn't run because you run out of gas. It's not as sufficient. But when you've got too much, and you'll never, ever hit, with that, you'll never hit the right plates under expandable unit to compensate for each running of the motor. You would hit, you'd, you'd hook it up and either idle or halfway or full revs or whatever. You would never be able to strike it and keep anything to be able to accelerate and de-accelerate. That's where the stainless one does everything. Solid stainless does everything. You have soft stainless, forget it too. We've already had that. You've seen the unit that some take there. Very thin stainless expands. And that's worse, more dangerous, because it is solider. And if it lets go, it's gone. She just rips you apart. You've seen balloons go off. We've got them in a very flexible rubber um, container. The gas is sealed in there. But when it gets out, it just doesn't, there's a great big ripping. You have your hands close to it, take your hair off your hands. It's not the gas, it's not a flame, it's, not, it's the inrushing. It causes that straight in. You can get your balloon back, it tears it. So if this gas goes off and it's pressurised there, it's trying to get out, but as soon as it can get out and it meets a bit of air. We've had a fella, I didn't want to put it on tape now. Fella took a polythene one here to school to try and show the teacher. Blew the balloon up with a uh, 240 volt, 12 volt, what do you call it, transformer. Blew it up, she got so far up and then psh, the fuse cut out. She flicked it on in and went up again. Down it went again. Up again, clicked out again, down it went. There was nothing in it. The fella put the balloon to his mouth to blow it up. He blew a little tiny bit of air into it and the thing went kabang. That was it. Nearly took his face off and half the school. Well, it went off like a cannon and then we... There wouldn't have been any gas in there. What you could really say was gas. So the, it was just a shrunk balloon? A balloon what had been expanded out with the gas in mm -hmm. a polythene tube, which didn't mean anything anyway because there's no vacuum on it. It was done under atmospheric pressure. It was put into the balloon. The balloon went flat three times. And I mean flat. And then all he did... He just took the balloon out by itself. He's over put in more stuff than what you can handle. If you put in carbons, you put in... Um, ionising gases, you put in oxygen, too much, miles too much for that amount of gas, what's there, it'll pre-ignite. It'll go off itself. You don't need a spark. Just need a crazy mix. A crazy mix. And his crazy mix was flat balloon with a bit of gas in there, a tiny bit of gas, and he went, bang! So it is, you know, you just don't want to do the wrong things because you get dangerous. Imagine a unit imagine. which would have, I suppose, maybe... Must have bonded with the uh, balloon the rubber or something. Yeah, the polythene units I've seen expand out. You can't. I don't know how much pressure you reckon you can push by a thumb on the, one of those lids of that polythene stuff, but I reckon you could push 40, 50 pounds. Even if you stood on it, you wouldn't bend it out. Now, hooked up to, to vacuum of the motor, those lids, I've had them expanding out an inch to an inch and a half. There's no way in the world you can get that amount of pressure. You take that unit, seal it off down to the to a um, gas station and you put the air hose on there and you can build up a hundred pound pressure. And I bet you that lid won't bend, bend out the way it was underneath. Imagine that gas getting out. If it mm. just split and got out, it would take everything. Go on, mate. No worries. So don't use it. Mm. Okay. Keith around here went and put eight to ten teaspoons of caustic into well, the water, the trying to get out more gas, well, right? too much current to get you, right? 
It ate the sure. flaming metal, and now when we go to, to test it, I did. I never went around to check, check my union again. I wasn't interested. I hooked it up here. It worked beautiful. It ripped out tremendous. It was from pulling over 100 amps one way I'd done it, 12 volt 100 amps. I got it down to pulling 12 volt 5 amps and ripped out more gas than you can hold your thumb on. You hold your thumb on for half a second, count, and you go, a thumb goes, boom. If you got a too full of water, she'd hit the roof. That's because of the floating plates. Floating plates, yeah. two floating plates. But it went to this other person's place, seeing the video's gone, went to the other person's place, and he played with it. He added more and more and more caustic. It polluted the metal, it ate the metal. Yeah. We went back after about uh, a month and a half of it being there, and he said he's played with it a fair bit. He tried lighting it, he tried everything, and he lit it up. He had an explosion because he did the wrong thing back into the unit, but I had a safety device in there. Mm. It's on video, I told you about that. It went back in the unit, it didn't blow up, and I just had a safety device connected mm. in neutral water. Anyway, um, then he let it sit with the extra caustic in there and everything else, went to get it. The damn thing was pulling, you could have put as many amps as you, uh, volts and amps in, in that as you like, and you wouldn't have got off nothing. Mm. We were getting off. Blip, Look, with about 10, 10 things in, and and just <coughs> before on the way I had it, which was heaps less. Didn't know it. No, I've never. I've never had That's what made it harder for you. Never had a bloody video camera in my hand before. Yeah. Well, I'm taking a shot now of the water cell in Joe's car. This water cell was in Joe's car, which Paul has actually driven, and um, he states that it really flies. Paul, you also drove the car on petrol too, didn't you? Oh, yeah. And you could uh, notice the difference, yeah? Oh, two different cars. Two different cars, like hopping out of a, um, One was a fork, like compared to a V8, yeah? One was balancing and bloody totally running out of steam at about 5,000 RPM or something like that. Yeah. On the, um, uh, uh, on the water, uh, on the water fuel or whatever you uh, want to call it. Worms uh, energy. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, all energy. It was um, uh, still revving hard at uh, up to 7,000 plus. And, plus, uh, yeah. Yeah, running as smooth as a... Uh, Silk? Oh, absolutely fabulous. Yeah, well, I'm just yeah. taking a shot now of Joe playing around with some stuff in his garage. That's Looks like he's playing with um, the uh, Weber, the side drafts carbies. Yeah, the whole system. And here's a shot now in the engine bay with his just his plain single or is it a double barrel carbine. It's a plain downdraft engine, yeah. Cells over the plates, over the tubes, up the car, whatever. Carry around the workbench with the tools or anything else you want. Cells, um, whatever. You want to get any of these on? One I'll charge up the uh, water and everything else in first, and this will produce a gas. I'll show you in a minute when I blow it off with a few bubbles. I'll lift this out if you want. The brown shit on the um, outside is just what's coming out of the water, you know what I told you? Mm, yeah. Okay. 
This one here doesn't have it, but this one here in the bottom fetches springs negative, totally square across. You have negative at the bottom, negative at the top, neutral in the center, I mean positive in the center, yeah. two neutrals, two neutrals. Uh -huh. Got that? Yeah. Gas, it only comes out here. Um, Show you that on that one in a minute. Different configuration of plates. Negative, neutrals, positive. Negative, underneath water. Gas comes out here, which we'll see in a minute. Glass bottle. Bolt through the middle, uh, down to the bottom, has a negative. Plates are held in. Neutrals, positive to that wire you can see connected, brings a positive inside. Negative plugs up underneath, positive clips to the outside one in there. And then we'll show an experiment with that in a minute. Wanna go along? Stainless um, fire extinguisher, negative in the top, neutral plating on the inside. Okay, uh, tubes, negative travels down the centre right to the bottom. Explain about that soon. Positive hooks up either here, here, or if you want the best gas, hook it up to the furthest point, around here mm. or out there. You can release that and bring gas out the front. You leave it off, gas comes out here. Vacuum gauge or pressure gauge. Just plug that onto there. Turn on, this is a battery charger, or you can plug it up to a battery. Turn it on, you can read what pressure you've got. Um, hook onto the front or here, uh, you know, on the front, open that, put a pump on, put a car on, vacuum, and it shows your vacuum reading on the gauge as well. What vacuum you can pull there in. Um, this little cell here, it has um, neutral plates on the inside. No, char no positive charge to it whatsoever, no power. Negative through the bottom. This just bolts and separates it from there. This just goes into a car. And your car doesn't have, doesn't put any charge, positive or anything else to the outside of that. Negative connected to the body and that's all there is. As anything going through it, as a field, hook on a, um, over there. This goes into there, that screws onto there, that goes through the firewall, that's aluminium, you can use copper, but if you use copper you've got to put a, a positive wire from the car to the furthest point to get the gas out, what we want, and it's not hydrogen or oxygen. Um, take it to the outside. On aluminium, aluminium doesn't need a charge putting onto it, it stores it in the metal, brings it out to the um, into your motor, You've got to have a separate piece of rubber on the end here to stop because this here is positive, even though it's not connected, but the gas inside, the water inside and everything else is positive. So this is a positive, positive connection. You can't connect it to motor. You've got to put a piece of rubber in or else you get a dead short, the cell don't go. You've got to pull it all apart, wash it all out, recharge water up, put it back in, restart. And it gives you a problem doing it. So that's how that works. I'm recording. This um, bottle here has neutral plates in it. It doesn't have any um, caustic or salts or anything else in it. It's plain water straight out of a creek off a hill. It has a neutral plates. It has positive outside, negative underneath, as we see. I now turn on the battery charger, and you will see. Hallelujah. Now look down the side. Work your way over the side. You'll see the, that's hydrogen going downwards. It won't break the surface. You see this vapor coming off the top. That's possibly what's running the cars. Goes down, fills up, it's plain water, doesn't brown, doesn't dirty, always got this vapor. Down below here, if you look carefully, if you can pick it up, something is being drawn down from halfway. From here, it's going up, 
from there up, from there it's going, something else is being drawn down and taken underneath. Can you see clearly? Maybe. Yeah. I've got a vapour coming off the surface. All that in there is hydrogen. Look at the top, hydrogen won't break the surface. I'll turn it off and just keep your thing going there and you'll see what happens. Power's turned off. Clears it up. If you lower your water, put it on tape, if you lower your water to level with the plates or be lowered, you will not get any of that stuff down the sides. It'll just produce bubbles out of each plate. If you want to see that, I can tip that top off and show you. You won't get any down the sides. If you want to see... Um, I'll just... <clears throat> you'll be able to see this. When I come back down, you'll still see it producing production it's not what's coming back up that will go off the plates if you can see through there that produces gas for maybe an hour or two after that's been on only for half a minute you charge that water up and charge those plates up you have continuous charge coming off that water as electricity or bubbling and charge none of those bubbles are breaking the surface or sticking on the surface they are gone now we just well, you don't make a fibber out of me we go back up again, we have got our water below the plates. Put our same on again, we turn on. You want to come to the top now, you will see there's nothing up and down the sides, but look what's happening in here. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now we're getting bubbles here. Yeah. Each one of those in turn, I'll put a little bit more water in, you'll see. This is just plain water in the charge. It's got a bit of gunk in this one, but that's fine. You just come up, see it? When I go down the side, you'll see it still hasn't gone over the sides. I will to bring the water up to clear the top. Now, as soon as the water goes over the top, As soon as the water goes over the top. You'll see something breaking, going down. Then it start, It comes back up. That is coming up. You can see it clearly now. This is production very well. From here down, it's drawing something down under. Mm. Now you want to look on the top, you'll see the bubbles. They've only come since we've transferred it over. Keep the video going and hang on to your drums. Hallelujah. And the aluminium, which was in the alum, and all the detergents they put in the water to clean it up, is still in this one. Um, sorry, wrong one. That one goes there. That just clips to the outside as a positive. The neutrals, as I showed you before. This here just hooks up to negative. Stop that from touching. Now, that's just clicked onto the negative cone. I'll lift it out to show you again, just to be on the safe side. See, no connection. Same thing again. That just goes into the negative. I clip it on. You want to look in there, you'll see something. See all the vapour? Reckon. The wind's blowing pretty strong here too, so it's blowing away the vapour. Yeah. If you were to sniff that vapour, would uh, just, just nice, just nice oxygen or hydrogen, or what would it be? 
what we're doing now... At least if it's you, not poisonous. If you, no, it's not poisonous. <laughs> if you look at the size, what we're doing is we are stretching the water out. The water has come up about that far so far and it will keep coming up. And we'll lift and lift and then it'll start forming large bubbles. And those large bubbles, what we can do, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the power off the battery in a second. And those bubbles we're going to light with the power turned totally off. Mm. Just want to show you that these are collecting into a larger stuff. Look at that. Mm. See them? Well, and this here is nice, fine, beautiful, clean white. A bit of this brown here is from the water. I've had some bad water lately. Mm. So, now, I want to turn the power off. I've got a match. We'll leave it for a minute. We're still there. It's just a match. You right? Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> what, hap what happened to the roof? <laughs> yep. Now the water has dropped right back down again. Yeah. We stretch the water up, it lifts. Totally lifts up, it stands up. That's that one. That water in there is charged. If you can get that white stuff off the top. Now you'll be able to see that it'll still produce for ages. That has not been charged either. Nothing's been on this morning. This folly should be able to tell you. Mm. So, now, water, but we've got our bubbles. Each one of them is relightable. And if you can see across, which is not water's not deep enough, you can see across, it'll still be producing gas off those neutral plates. I don't know whether you can pick it up. It's only fine, but now that's pushing 14 and a half pounds per square inch of atmospheric pressure to get any of those bubbles off or produce anything. All we do is hook a vacuum to it. You remove the 14 and a half pounds per square inch and then you put out, not hydrogen or oxygen, you put out whatever. And that's what runs cars. And it comes off like I don't know what. Okay. This is a keg for charging charging the water. I don't use this for anything except for charging. Positive outside, negative in <coughs> top and bottom, positive in the inside, center, outside is charged. If you want to try it, this is plain water, which is in here, which comes straight from the creek. I just want to come up an inch further so you can see the bubbles. Now, we'll turn the power on, and instantly the water starts to rotate. Rotation. Waits a minute, builds a charge, no bubbles yet. As soon as it's charged, now our bubbles come from nowhere, no white stuff, no clearing. Beautiful bubbles stick on the surface. <clears throat> it's plain fresh water straight out of the tap. That's how long it's been on and charging. The first few bubbles. <laughs> That's with it on. Now we'll leave it go for a few minutes because they're not the bubbles what I want to show you. What they've done is went from the centre straight out to the outside. We're going to get a bit of muck in this because the water is polluted up here. The better the water, the fresher and cleaner the water, the better this is. This is charging the water, and if you're talking about sewage or dirty water or pollutants in water, this is what it does to it. It totally cleans your water, pulls them off, separates it, you can put it, it's not underneath, it is only on the surface, brings it to the surface. You can get a dipped bucket, strain it all off, take it off, throw it away, you've got clean, beautiful water. Mm, that's really yucky stuff to look yeah. at, isn't it? Now, we turn the power off, power is off, there's still production going very well off this. This is charged well. No charge on. Whoops, flame went out. Doesn't matter. There's no charge on. Ah. 
Come in. What's the bill going in? Louder. Getting better. <laughs> Getting better by the minute. That water is cold. They will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And they come up, I've had them that big. Yeah. You oh, can leave them hands. all day. As yeah. long as they don't burst, they won't burst, they'll sit there all day. Yeah. That gives you a surface tension. That's why they're sitting there, surface tension. Everything else you'll do, you can take this if you want. Mm. Everything else you do, everything what comes off there will break the surface and it's gone. There's no bubbling, there's no nothing and nothing stays there. This is charged water. This is the only time and any time else that you'll get bubbling. Wait a minute. Now water's charging up now, comes through. The very first bubbles are lightable and blow your head off. You charge that water, leave it going for a short period of time and get a good charge into the water. You can see what's coming off. They're clean, they're clear. Mm. There is totally nothing Beautiful stuff. in that water. Mm. The more you leave it to charge, the better it gets. Those bubbles, they will stay there all day, all tomorrow. You come out tomorrow, you hit the, um, any one of those bubbles, you hit them with a match and, and do you notice it's getting louder? <laughs> sure is. Which your ears drums doing? Because <laughs> mine are absolutely <laughs> ringing like shit because that totally inflated. Yeah. And if you got on camera, there was no flame, no orange flame, that's, no that's nothing. Right. Totally. No. Now, the bubbles come after the flash. It's still there. Mm. No charge on now. Mm. And it's still charging. Yeah, it's still, still going. Still, still bringing bubbles up here. Yeah. I haven't charged that. It's getting louder and louder. You want me to leave that on for, say, um, 10, 15 minutes? You will not stand <laughs> in here because every one of these sheets of tin on this roof and everything will be shaking with the mm. sound. You'll have to hold your mm. eardrums and it'll mm. go through your hand. I've my, done it. My, my your ears. body will feel a thump. Yeah. Not against it. Yeah. Your body will feel a thump. Yeah, the ground down here will thump. Shake. Yeah. Shake. That is plain, straight, nothing in it. You want me to drink it? Mm. If you want to try it straight, finger in, feel the slip. There is no costing. Please, if this is for you, I'm not guaranteeing that every car will run straight away off this gas. The little Escort took a day and a half. That's a cast iron motor. It had to put positive gas into the manifold and into the motor and it totally changed it. It took a week after we took the manifold and carby off and the gas off, it took a week before I could change the timing back and get it to run smooth again on air and petrol. A week after to get it back out of the metal. Now, you use this, hook this up. I know it runs on the Rover. The Leyland, the Escort, a Holden motor, um, a Falcon motor, um, a forklift, gas forklift, um, many others. Can't think of all now. But some cars with a negative charge in the motors takes a certain time for these not hydrogen or oxygen, these ions or these positives to get in, pollute the metal, change it from negative to positive, then it runs. This car here now, we'll show you later, it will run straight off because the pollutants are still in the motor, they're in the manifold, they're in the carburetor. Hmm. So I'll show that later anyway. So, and that gas there, you saw, has no colour when you light it. It is, if you want to, if your eardrums can pick it up there, totally implosive. Pulls your eardrums very loudly, doesn't it? Hmm, that's very sure loud. <laughs> no flame, no nothing, and it is not hydrogen, that stuff. There is nothing in the water. I've drank it, he's tested it, there's no slippery, there's no nothing. And all these two, exactly the same. If you put caustic or anything else into those waters within that period of time, any of these will be red hot. With the charge and the plate and the stuff that's coming off. They'll all turn hot. They stay cold. Water in about there. And this is gas reserve, and this is a welder. And this is a cutter, and this is also for running cars. It's been run, this one's run a car, that one included, the escort included. I've now filled it 
follow fresh water what Paul has brought down, straight he knows what it is, right to the brimming top. I'll now take the charge, I'll put it on, positive outside, negative hose that goes inside like I described before. I'll turn the power on, I want you to get close here because you will see with charging, water will lift, expand out. now on. Clean white bubbles. Have a look at the tension on this. It's standing up a quarter of an inch or more, the water above the surface. Just for fun, we got these bubbles will trickle over down here. They're on there. You see them? This is plain straight water. Oops, that's a plain straight dead match. <laughs> you watching? This is power on. I don't have power on. I'll let some go down and build up. This is dead, straight, plain water. I'll just get a little bit of charge into the um, into the water. Oh yeah. You want to leave them sit on there? They build up. They'll stay on there like they do on the key. On there, they stay on. That is not off the cell, that is the bubbles that charge. The water, plain water running over is charged. Hit it again if you're right. It's charging, you see? It's getting pretty good, isn't it? It's just about as good as your balloon was, Les. <laughs> there right. you are. We turn the power off. The bubbles are gone. You want to have a look in? How was it going? Water's shrunk back down again. You okay? See they're collecting in big blobs in there. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm gonna light it. Can't use. You're right? Yeah. No power on. No power on. That's that one. like to get some onto the surface down here. This is plain, straight out water. That now, the water is down to there, you've just looked. Yeah. The water is now stretching, stretching, it's coming up. It's coming up. And we'll just wait, you'll see the bubbles in here if you want. If we're hopefully, it's sitting there now. And in a few seconds, it should pour over the top. Come on. It's got to build up what I just set off in there. Here it comes. Have a look at the action if you like, if you want to come in closer. I'm swimming in the country right there. wondering this is dead plain water and full from there to there is plates turn around look at the charger we're pulling less than 20 amps when I charge this up and leave it overnight we will pull two or four amps only and do better than that now I'll add a little bit more so you know. So all that plain water. Let's see. 
and gurgle over the side. We'll try and get some down here to stay on there. It's on timber, that. I'll show you something else with this again in a few minutes, but we'll get a bubble. That one had a yellow flame. Why it had a yellow flame is it's on paint. Oh, right, yeah, uh, TikTok. Very loud. It is. <laughs> on neutral plates. Mm -hmm. What happens is. Ordinary electricity spirals and goes right to the bottom and gurgles up. Mm -hmm. Comes up with the bubbles. On neutral plates, the current goes in and does a total right in bend in every direction off these. Straight out sideways. So what happens is if you inject the negative in at the top, positive doesn't matter, it's right around. If you inject the negative in at the bottom, it does this all the way up to the surface, everything's trying to get to the surface. Now, if you just put it into the top, it doesn't work the full length of the way down, so you have to put your negative in at the bottom. Hmm. In this blue one, I've injected it at the top, but I've run a wire straight down through the center of the negative and put it on the bottom. And then it's like an insulated wire. Yeah, insulated and, wire. And it's sort of it. like this, it's insulated all the way to the bottom and then it's hooked onto the under the bottom, right at the bottom, and then it works its way all to the top. If you hook it just in through the top, I've done it, you don't get half the production, half the bubbles, you will produce hydrogen, and you only get a few little bubbles, nothing. You gotta do it in certain positions. This here is totally by all rights and figures, by putting neutral plates across that, cuts down to buggery on, each one that goes through it cuts down, halves the current input. So by rights, plain water should not produce one single bubble. Hmm. Nothing. Hmm. And you saw what that does. Well, that's right, yeah. And now, and, and I can you... increase that threefold over yeah. by doing something else. Outside, positive. The one we had connected to negative before, we will now hook up to positive. So the center is positive. The outside is positive. Negative, you mean? Positive. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, yeah. I see what you mean. That's positive. Yeah, yeah. I bring this to the center wire, center one. Yeah. I then... put negative to the center of those tubes. You want to see three times production off the same plate? Have a look. Watch how the bubbles are. Look at the vapor. Look at the coloring. You're watching how quick it is. You got it? You watch. See how quick it is. That's just going to the center. That is not the way I do it. That charges your water awful quick. Hmm. What about a bit of a bad connection? Huh? You can add charge to it if you want. This is plain straight water. Don't know why it's, it must be the stuff in the water. It's pulled 10 amps. You shouldn't even pull half an amp on this. We'll grab some um, plain water. We'll build up because I always have the water right down. Good, good old burst on water. Well, 
want to say the same? He said, Mama runs a car. There's not been cars to put on this morning. It's plain, straight water. Mm. Hasn't had anything in it yet. No charge, no nothing. I'll drink the water. You ought to know what the water was. Mm. Pushes, it, pushes out the water and everything else it doesn't want. Even under vacuum. It'll pull down to where it wants. Won't use any from there. Oh, yeah. You go as far as you like on this stuff if your water's below where she can pull anything down the hose. And you will not use, go around Australia if you want, you won't use any water. Come back, you've still got the same water. If you go above where it's going to vacuum it out or push it out, you will use what it pushes out or use what will come out under vacuum or splash. After that, you won't use any. You can keep topping it up as far as you want, whatever you want to do on top. Build it up, draw it out through vacuum. This has been on for as long as you heard so far. Bloody hell. Pull the eardrums if you want to. Very well. You want to see? Still lifting. Yeah. If you put your thumb over, very strange things happen. The bubbles go back to the water. See? Yeah. You want to come up yeah. closer and have a look? I'll put my thumb over. I'm going to build up a bit of press. Come over and have a look in. I got, I got you, you zoomed got right in where I okay. can. Watch. Yeah? And we're getting a pretty good pressure, aren't we? Oh, yeah. yeah There's right. nothing wrong with that. And um, well, how, many, how many tubes have you got inside one another there? Uh, in that one, one negative, there? two neutrals, one positive. That's all. Oh, yeah. Like four. Yeah. Four. Now, if your gas is no good and you want to increase the performance of implosive gas near any girls, do that. Let it build up for a sec. Take your finger off. Here we go again. Hydrogen. Yellow flame. Got that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Want to change the gas? All you do is put your finger back over it again or add plain, straight water. Clear bubbles. Yeah. Different bank. Different vein altogether, yeah? And wait your Different turn and vein. everything else. That's all you do. And, that, and that, that's, 12, that's 12 volt. 12 volt. 12 volt and 10 amps. 12 volt, 10 amps. Hmm. Normally, without this pollutant, the cell is cold. Without the pollutants and everything else I use, you get half an amp on this, but this water's gone bad in the last couple of days. Hmm. This cell here yesterday was pulling 25 amps. I let it settle overnight, it's pollute, got some of the pollutants out, it's now pulling 10. It will leave till tomorrow, put some charge in, leave tomorrow. We will go down and play water down to half an amp, and I'll put out the same gas, but more potent. That is plain straight water, a few bubbles there, very, very, very potent. As soon as you get the minerals and shit, you've got a dirty water, you've got a hydrogen, you've got a yellow flame, you've got less bang, no ear pull, you've got a pressure. You come to a plain water, clean, good plain water, clear bubble, clear everything else, very bang, very implosive ear pores. Anyway, don't leave that. If I feed back, this machine here, low both amps. If I turn on, I can put 60 amps in. And stay the same boss. Oh, That'll yeah. charge a battery if you want. I can go for a small bike battery right up to one, two, up to five batteries if you want. Yeah. yeah. Understand? You know what it's got? Ten amps. About ten volts on me. Yeah. Eleven volts. And sixty amps. That's, that's a, got. That's a super. That's charger. sulfuric acid in a battery. Yeah. In water or the sulfuric acid on the plates. 
And Sandy's pulling heaps and heaps and heaps of hands. We saw a minute ago that um, we had um, very low voltage, 12 volts and everything else on this. See what we've got there? We can plug this on. Now, I've set it on boost, and you watch what I can put in. I can put in... 55 volts. 55, 60 volts. Now, you want to see what I'm putting into the cell? That one after it's been charged. Half it's charged now. Yeah. What am I putting in? Half, Half an amp. amp. On plain water, and I'm still getting out the same gas. Now, if I come back, can I still do this one? Yeah. I go to boost. I can put in less. This is a good machine. I can set it to anywhere I want. I've got it open so I can change things and get out whatever I want. We want to see. We can go over to this one again and put it on. We can put in voltage, whatever voltage you want. Go to boost. We can go to 54, 50 some volts. Same gas, same everything else. Still get out the same one. Don't care about voltage. The more voltage I put in, the less I pull on the way I've set up my plates. The less voltage I put in, the more I pull. Yeah. That's if I want to produce hydrogen, oxygen, or gas, or bubbles, or anything else. But it's not what I do. It's not what I want to do. Go back to one, and I do worse. It's however I want to set it up. Or I can go to just an ordinary battery, do the same. If I put it on charge and go through dry, I put, put water in the, in the car. It should have been on the other video about me. Let's fill to the top. Now. When I put this into there, and I'll for you, I'll put a bit of charge into it. Now, you'll see the bubbles go into there off the cell as soon as it builds up the charge in here. Bubbles will go into there. They're very explosive. They're through a flash arrestor. If we can light them first off, doesn't matter. That water should, as the charged gas goes into it, should expand that water out, which is plain river water, and pour it over the side. Charge expands the water. As soon as we get the bubbles coming through. Mm -hmm. We'll see if they are lightable straight off. Mm -hmm. Same cell. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Different gas in there, what we want all together. Straight through, you just let this, we did nothing, just put the top on. But what's coming off there cannot be lit by. Now we're changing over to implosive gas, watch the flame and the match. No, no, some of the other still. So you've got three different kinds of gases there already. Yeah, one with yeah. the other flame, one with an insulation that throws water at you, and mm -hmm. the other one which is not lightable. All in the same... Yeah, all sorts of different cocktails. One I don't yeah. like, one I'll put it out. One I'll throw the water out. Inflation. All of the same. That's what happens. Now it turns off. Where are you going? No power on. There's no pressure in that or anything else, it's still going. It just keeps going. Mm. Funny thing about all this is, every one of these, with plain water, with the power turned off, has twice the bang gas with the power turned off as with the power. Hmm. Yeah, well, some of these are loud. <laughs> with the power off. Yeah. More bang with the power off, with no power going into it. It's more banging. 
Now, what we'll we do whatever. is we take this out. What we've got here is a pressure gauge. This pressure gauge, it's a vacuum and a pressure gauge, and what it's set at, I can't get it back up, it is 10 below north. Oh, ah, yeah. anyway and watch it build up a couple of sea. But, and we have implosive gas which goes into the water and throws it out and does not have a flame. I'm here with an open lid. I turn the power on for three seconds, I turn it off. I have, when I light it, that's air rushing in. I turn the power back on, three seconds, turn it off. I put a match to the top, I get air coming out. I turn the power back on, I turn it back off again, three seconds again, I now blow everything to smithereens. Just goes boom! Three different gases and you can see the three different gases there by each bubble. In the cell here with an open lid I get implosive, exhaust and then explosion or implosion. Actually it's implosion because I've sucked this lid here totally down into there three times now and I've had to knock them back out on an open cell I'll pull the centre plates clean up that far out of the water as the implosion went and I threw electricity right around this whole shed off the cell when it went and I'm not going to do that for you now because I've already been cut and shocked and the flame <laughs> sorted me out now we're up to 100 oh well, actually 120 because it's 10 over see now on this, I just put a balloon. I'm going to make sure it seals properly. Balloon over the end. Lean on. So what one bubble does? What? It's very, very light gas. Now, to light this, I have to cover my hands because all my hairs and everything else totally, totally non-existent afterwards. Actually, I'll get a bit of paper. Let's cut your stuff for a second. This balloon is going to do one of three things. One is it's going to implode and, and flame and turn the balloon inside out and in rushing air is going to take every hair off me or everything else. The second thing, that's if we've got the implosive gas straight off. Secondly, if we've got hydrogen, there will be a big bang and a yellow flame and explosion. Thirdly, there will be another thing which, if it's there, you'll see. change the gas, three different gases I can get off that cell to do whatever I want. You still, you still there, John? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> that, that has a yellow flame to it. Yeah. That was hard, John. First off, second time I'll do it. I just, every, if you pick it up on there, there's a very good shed, and every one of the sheds that's in on the shed just shook. Oh, it rattled, yeah. Yeah, right? And it pulled my eardrums, and so on. But my eardrums are still in, so that was um, explosion hydrogen, as well as a little bit of inflation. Mm. Get the other stuff. I don't even know where the balloon went. What colour was it, white? A white one there. Okay, what we got, this is what's left of the balloon fragmented and we've got a frequency in it which is hydrogen that's a low negative wave when you get the implosive it is 100% it's ripped 
Yeah, it's the finest buggery. Yeah. Absolutely. Next time I blow up a balloon, you saw first off, I said before, first off, you get one gas. Second off, you get another gas. Third off, you get another gas. Yeah. So that's how it works. I don't know why, but when you get the gas what you want, you can test it by a balloon to see what you got. Yeah. But what you do, what you got now, you've got to know what comes next. Yeah. And then you can draw that gas off. Yeah. If you don't want that gas, you put a balloon on, you blow it up, you can flame and get the next gas. Fine, up which, yeah. We'll do it again if you want. Uh, I think we'll save our eardrums. Different gas altogether, yeah, different bang. Different gas. We have all the balloon here now this time. And this time we don't have firstly any frequency. Now the next gas I know what I've got and I'm not gonna light one of them. No. Because the next one will turn the balloon inside out, fragment to a million pieces and flame and pull our eardrums and it's I've done it, I've smashed these lights before, so I can yeah. pull them out of the roof. Yeah, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> And these in the inside of the balloon are dry. The next gas that runs a car, when the balloon is fragmented, the balloon is turned inside out. This is the way that balloon was then, yeah. out right way up. The balloon is fragmented to a million pieces and it's turned inside out and it is soaking wet. Oh, yeah. It's condensed the rain. Yeah. It's condensed rain. It's made Whoop. Different gas again. Yeah. Spits of water. Oh. Still got the same. That was hydrogen. See the other flame before? There's two different ones. One out was yellow flame, one in with spits of water.
There's no petrol in there now. But if you try it totally without You see that? You saw where the pet was before, didn't you? Yeah, well there's nothing there's nothing in the uh, in the filter there now, no. Should I've oh, got focus. Hmm. Can I see the fuel? Yeah, there? you can see the fuel. I can see it. Yeah, so. the fuel is back in there again, yeah. So yep. uh, the cell, if you got the sound going, what the cell does is when you hook it up and the cell starts to cut in. And if you do have fuel on there, uh, carburetor fights the running power till she does it. You can't get it on the air and petrol down under 500, as you know. Now the thing is down onto idle, mm. you know. And she drives the petrol clean back down the line and back to the tank, and you won't have nothing in your bowls or carby or anything else. And that's how, it, so you know what you got. Mm. You know what you haven't got. So. Mm. Why is it doing that? The gas is trying to take over and drive the fuel out.